Roger Cook has revealed his superpower. Got up on stage in front of hundreds of people and in his first major speech as the 31st Premier of Western Australia, he said... I'm Batman. Roger talked about growing up always being Robin. Or as my, pet, my family said, always Robin, never Batman. A supporting role that continued in his political career. But not anymore. Finally, you've made Batman. But which Batman? Well, not all Batmen are alike. Mark McGowan's Dark Knight was clearly more in the Christian Bale mould, broody and tough. Swear to me! Roger's more Adam West. Harsh. Well, Michael Keaton at a stretch. I want you to tell all your friends about me. WA's self-proclaimed Cape Crusader, he is going to regret <laughs> this one, I'm telling you, is keen to protect the good citizens of Gotham slash Boomtown alongside Vicky Vale and faithful manservant Alfred. Well, I think I've embarrassed him for long enough. So many villains. Locally, we've obviously got Catwoman. Meow. Yeah. And the Joker. Fight like a chichuana. But they're small fry compared to the real enemies of the state. Protecting the West from the evil clutches of the East. He's taken the fight to the barbarians in New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland. South Australia presumably being some kind of demilitarised zone. A key plank of the WA Canberra strategy will to be establish a permanent and ongoing presence in our nation's capital. So like a WA embassy. A diplomatic corps in the heart of Canberra dedicated to fighting for truth and fairness. Putting together a team, people with special abilities. Also a proportional slice of the GST, multi-billion dollar defence contracts and boondoggled infrastructure projects. Roger told the audience at Crown that we don't have a West Australian voice in Canberra and nobody's representing our interests on the national stage. We need to unwind decades of eastern state-centric attitudes and thinking in the nation's capital. Which will be slightly awkward for federal Labor MPs, whose explicit job is being a West Australian voice in Canberra <laughs> and representing our interests on a national stage. We all have our bit to do to elevate WA in the minds of East Coast decision makers. And even more awkward for Anthony Albanese, who Roger described as a great friend of WA, but apparently one that just doesn't listen. We need a concerted effort there to remind Canberra that we're the engine room of the nation's economy. Maybe Nick Nat could be our ambassador. Yeah, him standing over you arguing about the GST. What about the view from up there for Nick Nat? There are retirement advisors out there who'll be rubbing their hands together at the prospect of Nick Nat and Nui as a client, even though he's only 33. They'll say they can deploy all sorts of financial martial arts to safeguard his golden years. But the trick to golden years that would make the golden girls jealous is pretty simple pay off your house. If I'd had the money, I could have been living in a swinging condo instead of with... I better not say anything till I've had my coffee. <laughs> a slut and a moron. Easier said than done. Well, there's a hack. The baby boomers are generally OK on this point because their houses cost bugger all relative to their take-home wages, but less so with Gen X. You three have the worst of it. Gen X has had the benefit of mandated super contributions their entire working lives, so usually have pretty good nest eggs. Here's a trick to balance those things out. A transition retirement scheme allows you to access your super while you're still working if you need to pay off the dregs of your mortgage. Once you hit 59, that's what we call the superannuation preservation age, and you set up a TRIS, you can withdraw up to 10% of your super that's in that scheme. Once you retire, all bets are off, you can withdraw the lot and put it all on black, but if you're still working, it maxes out at 10%. What's the catch? There's always a catch, four in this case. First, your nest egg is going to be smaller when you retire because you've spent some of it. But trust me, it's nearly always better to have less super and no mortgage when you actually stop work. The second catch is that 10% is a pro rata rate. If you start your TRIS halfway through the financial year, let's say January, the most you can access is 5% of your super for that year. And the last two catches relate to tax. If you've hived off, say, 100 grand from your super and put it into a TRIS, the earnings on that 100K, the interest you earn or the dividends if it's invested in shares, the earnings will be taxed at 15%. It's 0% if you wait till you're 65 and access your super the regular way. Taxman gets you twice if you open a TRIS as soon as you can at 59. 
At that age, you'll also be taxed on the income you draw from your super. If you're drawing down, say, 10 k a year, that $10,000 will be added to your taxable income along with your salary, because remember, you're still working. The good news is that ends at 60. So best advice is to wait until you're just shy of your 60th birthday to start one. Okay, so if I'm 60 and I've got 500 k in super and $100,000 left on my mortgage... You could use your super to wipe that debt off in a bit over two years. Hmm. That's a real superpower. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.